Hello everyone, welcome to our tutorial on data frames and data sets in Apache Spark. First, let's discuss about data frames. A data frame is a distributed collection of data organized into named columns. Conceptually, data frame is equivalent to a table in relational database, but with optimizations for distributed processing. In Spark, you can create a data frame by reading in data from a variety of structured sources such as JSON, CSV or Parquet files. Once you have a data frame, you can perform various operations on it such as joins, filtering, aggregations and much more. Spark understand queries written using data frames and can optimize query execution during runtime with the help of Catalyst Optimizer. On the other hand, a dataset is a strongly typed immutable collection of data that provides the benefits of both RDDs and data frames. It is similar to a data frame but with added ability to work with complex types such as nested structures and custom classes. Datasets also provides static typing and runtime type safety which is capable of detecting syntactical errors during runtime. Both data frames and datasets can be transformed and processed using Spark's powerful API which includes functions for filtering, aggregations and more. Let's take an example to understand this better. Imagine we have a CSV file containing information about different products such as their name, category and price. We can create a data frame using this CSV file. I'll be using a Spark shell to create a data frame out of this CSV file. In the upcoming sessions, we will be doing all the similar activities in the IDE as well. I am launching a Spark shell now. By default, Spark shell will be launched on Scala. In case you want to launch PySpark shell, you can directly type PySpark on your terminal. As soon as we launch our Spark shell, it will by default provide us the Spark session available in the form of Spark variable and Spark context available in the form of SC variable. And our Spark shell is launched in our local machine. Now let me read the CHP file into data frame called df. I will use spark.read.csv followed by the name of the CSV file. This single line of code will create a data frame for us. Let us see what is inside this data frame using df.show. I will be printing the first 10 records and I am setting the truncate option to be false. When we set this truncate option to be false, an entire string in the column will be printed. As we can see that the column names are underscore C0, underscore C1 and underscore C2 and these column names represent the product name, category and price. But we can see that our CSV file al already has these column names which are present as a part of first row in the file. We can also mention the column names explicitly while reading the CSV file using the first row as column names for our data frame. Let us read the CSV file into same data frame df again. I will be using spark.read followed by the options parameter and give header to be true and again infer schema to be true and the rest of the path remains same. Okay, we have double dot here. Now our CSV file is again read into the data frame df. Let us now see what is there inside our data frame df using df.show again. Now we can see that the column names are taken from the CSV file directly, which are present in the first row of the CSV file. So once this data frame is created, we can perform various operations on it, such as filtering, aggregations and much more. For example, from this data frame, we would like to find the average price of all the products in the clothing category. So let us do that using this data frame. We can create one more data frame called average price which will be out of our data frame df. The first thing that I am going to do is I will filter the data frame with only the category as clothing. So this will filter our data frame removing all the other categories and only clothing category will be present in our data frame. Now on top of this I would like to do an aggregation. We will be use agg followed by the aggregation function as average of the column name price. This will do the aggregation for us. So okay, it created another data frame called average price. Let us see what is inside this. 
we can see the average price of all the products that fall under the clothing category in our data frame df using the same data frame df we can create a temporary view and use sql queries to query on the data that is present in df in order to do that let me first create a temporary view and i am naming my view as products okay the view products is created now let me create the data frame average price again now i will be using sql query to query the data and find the average price for that we will use spark.sql followed by sql query we have our average price created again so you can see that even if we do the aggregation or filtering using the data frame method or using the spark sql with the help of data frame the result will be the same the data frames are a powerful and flexible tool for working with data in spark they provide a convenient and efficient way to manipulate large amounts of data and can be easily integrated with other spark libraries and tools and the data set api is built on top of the data frame api so that you can use all of the same operations with a data set as you do with a data frame additionally the data set provides a functional programming api that is similar to the rdd api so you can use higher order functions like map filter on top of the data let us see an example to load and explore data set in spark in the above example explaining the data frames we created a data frame called df from the csv file called products we will be using same data frame df and converting it to a data set so in order to convert it to data set a data set need to have definition for the data so let us define the data in the form of a case class so let me create a case class called products and i'll give the column names as product name which is of type string and the other column name is category which is also of type string and the other column name is price which is of type double now i define the case class let me create a data set called df as data set so in order to create this data set we just do df dot as function we use this as function and provide the name of the class so the data frame df will be casted into the product class so which means that the first column would be string and the second column would be string and the third column would be double if this df has any of the columns which is not matching the schema or this class it will not be created now in our case we have our first column as string the second column as string and third column as double so it would be matching and we should be able to see this get created so you can see that it is org.apache spark sql dataset of type product so the data set is now created and everything that we have done until now on top of this data frame can be done using data set also let us so see what is there inside this data set so we can see that it is printed the same way how it is shown in the data frame df so these are the two examples on how to create data frame and data set in apache spark in our upcoming videos we will be exploring this data frames and data sets in depth and performing various operations on top of this data frames and data sets and in summary data frames are high level abstraction for working with structured data in a distributed computing environment and are compatible with a wide range of data sources data sets provide type safety and additional optimizations on the data and provide a functional programming api both data frames and data sets have their own advantages and use cases the choice between the data frames and data sets depends on the use case and the developer's preference and experience thanks for watching happy coding with spark